Here is a new product that we're offering on the Newbie Hack website. It's called a flex sensor and it measures resistance once it's flexed. The resistance value is measured across the two leads and in its flat orientation the resistance value is 25k. At its fully bent configuration you'll get as much as 125k of resistance across the leads. You can use this resistance to get a voltage to use in an ADC or analog to digital converter in your microcontroller project by connecting this lead to your high voltage, which would be 5 volts or 3.3 volts, and then bringing another resistor here and sending this to ground. And then this would be your voltage out. This is very similar to the wiper on a potentiometer. So you can use the analog to digital converter videos that I've created to determine how to get an analog to digital converter values into the microcontroller and get a value from 0 to 1023 or a value from 0 to 255. So you can get a value of how much this is being bent at any time. And you can use this in all kinds of applications for UI haptics or medical devices or robotics. Really, it is endless on how you can use this type of flex sensor. Let's connect this to a multimeter and see what kind of output we will get. You can see we have around 25K. And when I start bending it, you'll notice the number will rise. And it doesn't seem to get up to 125, but I am able to get it to around 70. And then you can also, you'll also notice that it doesn't rise when you're going in the reverse direction. You're only able to bend it in this direction, which is away from the, the lines on the top. To make the flex sensor work in a scenario that you can use ADC, analog to digital converter, you'll need to apply the voltage divider formula, which is V out is equal to V in R1 resistance 1, which is the flex sensor, over R1 plus R2. We know that the circuit looks like this. You have one resistor on the top going to our circuit voltage, and we have another resistor going to ground. And this is the V out. This would be the V in over here, and this would be the resistor 1 and the resistor 2. Unfortunately, in this case, R2 is going to be constant. And our R1 is the flex sensor, which is going to be variable. And this is going to limit our V out, because we can't change this constant variable unless we use a potentiometer. You're going to find that depending on how much flex you want in the flex sensor, you're going to want to change this resistor. And it may be better to use an actual potentiometer here, and the potentiometer value should be around 50k. I'm going to show you the reason why I came up, came up with this particular number, because the range of voltage you're going to be able to get with varying flexes and varying this resistor, you'll need to vary this resistor in a way that you'll get the maximum range out of your flex sensor, depending on how you want, it, want to flex it. If you want a range of flexing it from straight to just a, a small flex, then you're going to want to lower this resistor value. But if you want to really drastically change the flex in the flex sensor, you're going to want to increase the R2. Once you're satisfied with the amount of flex that you need in your application, you can settle on a particular resistor value here. So let's check to see what resistance value would be the best to yield us the best range of voltage output. We'll start with 25,000 to 70,000. That would be the, the greatest bending range that I would that I found in my tests. Although these numbers could be different because um, they say that it's a 30% tolerance on these sensors. All right, let's make this the R2 value here. And then we'll just make a table. Make this voltage in at 5 volts. And we'll start with uh, 10,000 for the R2. And the 25,000 is, is the lowest or the straight 
position of the flex sensor and the 70,000 is a completely bent position in the flex sensor and this would be the resistor value, the resistance value. So the voltage out is equal to, it's going to be this and that's multiplied by R1 which is the 25k divided by R1 again plus R R2. Something wrong in the formula, let's see. Ah, oh, 25k, maybe 25,000, 70,000. That was a dumb moment. Okay, so we're gonna use absolute values for the G1 because that's, the, that's not gonna change when we move this thing around. And the B1 is also not gonna change, so we need to use the absolute value of that. Okay, so now when I do a copy down the B1 and the G1 won't, won't um, move. So we'll just do that. And we'll do the same thing here, but there's gonna be one number we're gonna change and that's gonna be C1, from B1 to C1. We also have to make sure that this number is actually A2. Okay. Okay, now let's compute our voltage range. The higher volt minus the lower volt. And I'm gonna increase this by 1,000 each time. So this one will equal this plus 1,000. And then I'll just copy this down, copy this one down, and then the range. Let's see what we got here. Looks like there is, it actually stops getting higher on this value here. So 42,000 would be the best resistance value if you're having a range of 25,000 to 70,000. Let's see what that range would be if we didn't want to flex it that much. So let's go to a 40,000. So we'll be flexing it from a straight position to a 40,000 position or a slightly bent position, maybe halfway bent. So it looks like, do we need to increase the R2 value? Let's see. Now we're going up as we go lower in value. So Looks like the 32,000 would be the best value for the most voltage range here. But you also notice that the voltage range dropped considerably, almost in half, as compared to the, the one with the higher um, flex range, which is understandable. If your microcontroller does not or is not able to read the values from it, from the circuit that you've created, add uh, an op amp according to the data sheet for the flex sensor which will provide you a, a buffering signal or an impedance buffer for the output. So your microcontroller will be able to, to read the values that are in this range. If you wanted to increase that value or increase the range, then consider using a transistor or a transistor circuit to amplify the voltage.